Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. We're going on the road again to Monitor Audio, where I talk to Michael Hedges, the company's technical director. We talked about many topics, including distortion, the lowering of it, something the company is getting really, really good at. Here's what he had to say. So, Michael, this is a Platinum 300. And I've noticed over the years that monitor audio has progressively got lower and lower distortion mm -hmm. from its loudspeakers. In other words, they produce very little distortion. And obviously the driver tech is improving. You got two types of drivers here. You got your tweeter, which I'll get you to explain, and dynamic drivers. Mm -hmm. How, as a speaker engineer, do you lower the distortion? Let's talk about the tweeter first. Yeah, so this is our micro pleated diaphragm. It's the third generation uh, of that technology. It's based on an AMT, an air motion transformer. But designed uh, by you guys. But designed totally in-house and built in-house for us. Okay. So uh, one of the great things about an air motion transformer is it effectively it acts like a pure resistor. Okay. So in the impedance uh, that the amplifier sees, it's just a flat resistor. In this case, it's about five and a half ohms. Which is very easy to drive. Very easy to drive. So you're not looking at generating any complexity for the amplifier to drive it. So the amplifier is giving you its maximum performance in the treble. Okay. So that's a really nice thing. Um, it's also, because of its pleated design, it has a very high surface area. So what you see here, this small square in the, in the uh, loudspeaker, is only about one-sixth to one-eighth, depending on how we folded it. Oh, it's really? It's that the much total larger, surface larger. Surface area. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, that means we, it's, each individual part of the surface area is having to move very little. So with a dome tweeter, the whole dome has to move. With an AMT, the whole AMT moves, but it's folded and concertinaed onto itself, such that that movement is probably a quarter of what's needed for a dome, or maybe an eighth, depending on how you've designed that. Because of the increased surface area. Because of the increased surface area. The larger the area, the less it needs to move. Exactly. And that lowers distortion? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. as simple as that. It, well, it's one of the elements. Okay. One of the other. Uh, yeah, the other elements is the design. So, you know, we spend a lot of time on the rear mounting of the, the rear cup. And with an AMT, you don't see a huge chamber like you do on a dome tweeter because they actually want a very small volume of air. And how you treat that and how you design into the magnetic circuit that you have to have around it is very critical. These gaps between the bars that you see that drive the magnetic circuit through the AMT are critical in how they're shaped, the spacing, or how the shaping on the rear is, is done. And if you get that wrong, you get strong resonances build up in the AMT tweeter and you'll see those as notches in the frequency response uh, and that delivers you know inaccurate tonal balance if you're not careful but also they can then generate distortion they have a time domain effect if you're not careful as well okay now let's move to the dynamic drivers mm. how do you lower the distortion in those yeah so you know you really want to take a lot of care with a dynamic driver about the design in every element we do it slightly differently for mid-range drivers and bass drivers as they have different functions and different bandwidths so for a mid-range driver it's critical bandwidth might be 300 hertz to 3 4 kilohertz we often want it to have performance way above that 3 kilohertz region and that performance at the top end is all about how you design the cone and the surround okay we then want it to go down to, say, 300 hertz. And there's an element there about how you design the motor structure, the voice coil, and the suspension system that's critical. But it's more critical on a bass driver because the bass driver is running all the way to its lowest um, frequencies and even below that. Right. So with the bass driver here, it's crossing over to the mid-range driver um, about five or 600 hertz in this design. And so it doesn't need, the cone isn't so critical to the design. Okay. We still spend a lot of time, we copy the design down, and so it actually has a very high performance, and that's a great thing because it gives you headroom, and headroom's yeah. an amazing yeah. thing to have. But a lot of the work on a bass drive is spent on the motor unit suspension and making it linear. So you want to have a drive unit that when that cone moves forwards and backwards, the motion of the cone is, is linear. It doesn't change with position. So stiffness doesn't get stiffer as it comes out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has to in the end because it has to limit itself. Right. But you want a region where it's staying very consistent. Mm -hmm. And from the motor system, you want to create this force that's going to push the cone that stays the same at all excursion points. That's the voice coil and the magnet and all that. Exactly. So it's about keeping it as it's moving, both mechanically yep. and electrically, similar in all its position. Yeah. Okay. So if you have a certain amount of force to push the cone at its rest position, you want to have the same amount of force at its peak excursion to pull the cone back. Mm -hmm. If that force is rolling off, then you're going to get an element of distortion because you can't pull the cone back. So the momentum of the cone is going to keep the cone moving. Right. So there's all these elements there that feed into each other. You then get into sort of what we'd call sort of tier two nonlinearity, some of the more dis um, 
uh, detailed ones where you've got uh, inductance playing into that and you have um, hysteresis. Okay. So you have, for instance, in the suspension system, it, the suspension system has a certain resonant frequency at rest. Mm-hmm. But when you push that suspension system to its excursions, its resonant frequency will drop because you've stretched it and so it's softer. So then it returns back to its zero position. It now actually has a lower resonance than when it started that. Okay. And we call that hysteresis. Okay. Managing all these aspects on top of each other is what you effectively do to, to drive down the distortion. Right. Um, so we do that in a number of ways. You know, we simulate the drive units, we simulate suspension. We go through a number of prototypes. We look at the materials behind the suspensions with the magnets. We simulate the magnets. We, again, we prototype and we design those. When it comes to what I'd call the tier two linearities, inductance, um, then that becomes a slightly more complicated thing to model. Um, and we have simulations for that. But that becomes critical when you get onto something like platinum, where you're really now trying to drive down to the lowest depth. Also very critical on something like a subwoofer, mm. where you're looking at very high peak excursions, 25, 30 mil, uh, plus minus 25, 30 mil of stroke. So, yeah. you know, well over two inch almost yeah. of stroke length. And again, you're trying to keep all this consistent uh, so that you can pull the cone back and push the cone forward in, a, in, in the same way that the sine wave, the original music signal, is asking you to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people are concerned with just frequency response, but mm. in the listening, which I know you guys do a lot of there, do you find the distortion and each time you lower it a big improvement in the performance, all things being equal kind of in the frequency response that you get that yeah. distortion lower and lower? I think there's there's two types of distortion. You've got a broadband distortion where you just have your sort of distortion floor, for instance, and that will change based on where you've got your bass drivers in mid and tweeter. And so you might see them all line up or you might in some designs see the natural floor of the bass driver and then the natural floor of the uh, mid and then the natural floor of the tweeter. But on top of that, you then have um, other structures that occur. You might have a resonance and a peak and some other elements that are distorting. Um, so it's how you, what we often see in the listening session is those those resonant elements, those elements mm-hmm. that are spikes in the distortion profile you can are the ones hear that them. you really hear. Yeah. So removing those is our first priority. And then after that, pulling down that distortion floor, I think is a good word for it, pulling yeah. down that distortion floor is the next thing we'll try and do. And yeah, when you're in that listening um, session and you hear that distortion floor coming down, it's a clarity of the music. And sometimes I describe this as, a, you know, you can go into a listening session with a uh, not so good loudspeaker and you can create that clarity by manipulating the frequency response on making it brighter. Mm. But you can also create that clarity by reducing the noise, f- the distortion floor. Right. And so what we're attempting to do with products like Platinum and Hyphen Mm -hmm. is really pull that down so that the frequency response still has a controlled shape to it that delivers tonal bands, works for lots of different music. You know, whether that's a bad recording, still should be the best bad recording you've heard. Right. Through to an absolutely amazing recording that it delivers that experience and uh, satisfaction of listening to the music every single time. Well, very interesting. That's a lot more detail than I thought, all the different elements. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Is getting loudspeaker distortion really, really low an important thing? It's a vital thing. Nobody designs for high distortion. Everybody wants low distortion. And in speakers, it's really important because the distortion that comes from speakers is usually much, much, much higher than comes from the electronics. So getting loudspeaker distortion as low as possible is paramount to proper high fidelity reproduction. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching.